The Senate Finance Committee has requested information from the CEO of Equifax after the data breach that could affect about half of all the adults in the United States. The senators want to know who knew what and when. Hackers may have gotten the information of 143 million Americans when they infiltrated the credit reporting agency. Equifax says, it's important, Equifax says it knew about the leak back in July, but it didn't go public with the information until last week. 143 million of you may have had your information stolen. And this is not stolen. This is not just a department store credit card. This is Equifax. They have everything about you. Now, on top of that, three executives sold nearly $2 million in shares of the company in early August. Although Equifax denies that the executives knew about the breach at the time of the sale. For more on this, I want to bring in Senator Tammy Baldwin of Wisconsin, who sits on the, con uh, the Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation and has requested a hearing on this data breach. Senator, let me just tell you, I I've been in the, the business of business reporting for about 25 years. There are certain circumstances under which executives of a company sell their stock on a scheduled basis and, and the, the sale executes irrespective of anything else. They don't have any, any knowledge of what went on. Equifax says its executives didn't know about this. I'm just musing with you, Senator. I find it very, very, very hard to believe that information on 143 million people uh, were hacked. The company knew about it, but the most senior executives in a company didn't. Well, I'm finding it hard to believe, too. But what we need is facts. And really, Washington needs to step up right now on behalf of the 143 million Americans whose personal identifying information may have been compromised, um, was hacked. We don't even know by who or how dangerous the threat is to them right now. Congress needs to stand up. Uh, step up, hold hearings, and ask precisely the same sort of questions that you're asking, whether it's uh, the possibility that executives at the company uh, profited by uh, ha having inside information and selling stock before this uh, very damaging news to the company became public, or all of the activities that we've been hearing about where if you have come up to the company protection, uh, having learned that your data has been compromised, um, they were asking at first for people to agree not to sue. Not I did to it. I did legal it. Recourse. I did it. I pressed the button yeah. to see if I was hacked. And in the fine print was a thing that says that was an unrelated, it's not related to this particular hack. But they asked me to give up a right by checking to see if they had lost my information through a hack. How is this conceivable? I know. It, it is absolutely ridiculous. These, of, of course, we, we've seen these uh, forced arbitration clauses in so many different settings. They cause such great concern because mostly in the teeny tiny fine print and people don't know that they're uh, giving away their legal rights. And we're talking about a company that has... Uh, whether it's not having sufficient cyber protection or whatever, but has seen a breach of 143 million people's personally identifying information. And the first thing that they think of is uh, uh, making sure that people can't seek legal recourse against them, that's yeah. not acceptable. But, but, but now, Senator, they you're, backed off, as we know. Uh, but, they have backed off. They have backed off. I don't know why companies have to be forced by legislators or the public exactly. or the journalists to not do the right thing. But in fact, you said that, that Congress should be on the side of the 143 million people yes. who may have been hacked. In fact, there are two bills in the House right now that do the opposite. There are actual efforts in the House of Representatives to weaken consumer protections and strengthen the protections of financial services and credit agencies. I'm, I try really hard, Senator, to try and understand what for an elected person like you the payback could possibly be in weakening the protections of the, 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 the least among us consumers who are taken advantage of by, by financial services companies. Absolutely. You know, I was incredulous heard that there was a hearing or this legislation was advancing in the House at the very time that this revelation of this massive uh, data breach that jeopardizes so many Americans um, was made. Uh, we have to be doing just the opposite. I mean, Congress absolutely not, needs to step up, not just through hearings, but uh, 
really identifying the responsibilities a company needs to have um, to protect against the release of such uh, personal uh, identifying information, but then to uh, uh, inform people that yep. it has occurred and to protect them once it has occurred. Yeah, and I'm, I'm waiting to see why we, we can't get that one right. Uh, Senator, before I let you go, I know we, we're running out of time. I do want to ask you, a number of uh, your fellow uh, senators are working to advance a, a Medicare for All bill, uh, sort of a different way of saying a single-payer uh, health care bill. What's your sense of where a bill like this goes, given the remarkable opposition you've got on the Republican side to anything that sounds like single-payer health care? Well, Ali, let me start by saying we also have a very short-term uh, focus right now on passing bipartisan legislation to stabilize uh, the insurance markets after the volatility we've seen during the debate this past year. And we need to do that in short order. Uh, by the end of this month, before insurance companies put out the price for their, partic you know, their premium prices for the um, Affordable Care Act for next year. That said, I have always believed that we need to do more to have universal coverage, to have every American covered, uh, and that there are steps that we can take to achieve this, I hope, shared value in America that everyone should be able to afford quality coverage. There are a number of different proposals out there uh, that would allow you to buy into Medicare into Medicaid. And uh, uh, Senator Sanders is tomorrow going to be introducing a Medicare for all. Um, we are mostly on a bipartisan basis really big fans of Medicare. Mm -hmm. Why shouldn't uh, we look at expansion of that program as an added path forward? I'm all for it. Senator, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Senator